Salut. 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 Buenas tardes. Bonjour. Ni hao. Bonjour. Konnichiwa. Salut. Privet. Bonjour. Buongiorno. Welcome to New Jersey, located in the northeastern United States between New York State and Pennsylvania. New Jersey is about 150 miles in length and only about 70 miles wide with a long shoreline. You can even see New York City from our university campus, and Philadelphia is only about a two-hour drive. The state is divided into 21 counties, and Montclair State is located in Essex County. Our state capital is Trenton, and while we are a very industrialized and densely populated state, we have earned the nickname the Garden State, because New Jersey is the United States' leading producer of cranberries, blueberries, and tomatoes. We also have many beautiful parks, farmlands, forests, mountains, and beaches. Why should you come to New Jersey? If you come from abroad, you should not worry. You will fit right in because New Jersey is incredibly diverse with over 9 million inhabitants. And according to the State Office of Diversity and Inclusion, around 45% of our population identifies as a person of color. The largest immigrant groups come from India, China, the Dominican Republic, and Mexico. New Jersey is also home to the fourth largest Haitian American population after Florida, New York, and Boston. The town of Montclair is known for a socio-economically and ethnically diverse populations of just under 40,000 people, along with its welcoming spirit. Visitors and commuters can take the train, the bus, or drive into New York, which is only 12 miles away. Montclair has seven public elementary schools, three middle schools, and one high school. One of our middle schools is even named for the famous astronaut Balls Aldrin, who grew up in Montclair. Downtown Montclair is quite vibrant. We have many entertainment centers like art galleries, Montclair Art Museum, the public library, boutiques, live theaters and concert halls, restaurants representing cuisines from around the world, and so much more. There is also an annual Montclair Film Festival, which draws visitors from around the world. We shouldn't forget the history of Montclair. Situated on the land traditionally belonging to the Lenape Native American, the area began to be settled by Europeans in the late 17th century. A strong traditions hold that George Washington and the Marquis de Lafayette were in Montclair in 1780. Not far from the boulder mark in Washington's Montclair headquarters, it's what's now known as the Freed Slave House, the home of James Howe, a formerly enslaved man granted his freedom upon the death of his enslaver, Nathaniel Crane, a descendant of Montclair's founder, Israel Crane. Montclair State is a public university founded in 1908. In the United States, public universities receive funding from the federal and state government, usually leading to lower tuition costs than at private institutions. Our university is located in the Upper Montclair neighborhood. We offer eight degree granting schools with over 300 programs to choose from. We also have a graduate school offering master's degree and doctoral degree. We have over 21,000 students. Montclair State is a commuter school, but we also have several residence halls. Our undergraduate population has approximately 16,000 students, 40% of whom identify as white, 13% as black or African American, and 29% as Hispanic or Latino. We are officially designated a Hispanic serving institution by the U.S. federal government. Students of other ethnic backgrounds, such as Asian, Native American, or Pacific Islander, or those who identify as more than run race, make up the remainder of the student population. Just 
over 50% of our students are between 18 to 21, but many fall outside this range, often working full-time or even raising a family. We have many buildings and campus, including Dixon Hall, named for David Dixon, the first African-American president of MSU. There is also a student recreation center, a library, several performance venues, green spaces, sports fields, cafes, and more. Now let's talk a little bit about the Department of World Languages and Cultures. Housed in Conrad Schmidt Hall, we offer language and cultural courses ranging from civilization and literature to film and translation in nine language areas. No matter their major, all students at the university are required to take two language courses. Students can go on to major or minor in Arabic, Chinese, French, German, Hebrew, Italian, Japanese, Korean, or Russian. Spanish and Latino studies constitutes its own department to better serve the university's large Hispanic population. Finally, in partnership with the Feliciano School of Business, we offer a language business and culture major for students interested in international commerce while also concentrating in a second language. We have students and faculty of all different backgrounds involved in the French program, hailing not only from New Jersey and other states, but also from francophone regions such as Quebec, Haiti, Western North Africa, and France. French majors pick from among three concentrations, French civilization, translation, or teacher certification, and students can even continue on to earn their master's degree in French, concentrating in French studies or professional French translation. Située sur la côte atlantique, Bordeaux est la plus grande ville de la région Nouvelle-Aquitaine qui s'étend sur tout le quart sud-ouest de la France. Les étudiants bordelais viennent de toute cette région, comme c'est le cas pour les étudiants ayant participé à ce projet, ainsi que vous le voyez sur cette carte. Mais ils viennent parfois également de bien plus loin. Nous avions Raphaël de Paris et même Héloïse de Suisse. Bordeaux est une ville ancienne, inscrite au patrimoine de l'UNESCO, pour ses façades du XVIIIe siècle. À cette époque, elle était un port majeur du pays, faisant l'objet de nombreux échanges de produits et de main dœuvre Avec un tel passé historique, le nombre de lieux à visiter est particulièrement riche. Le quartier Saint-James est reconnu pour son architecture, mais surtout pour ce qu'on appelle la grosse cloche. Puis il y a la place de la Victoire, c'est là, généralement, que se retrouvent les étudiants. Le jeudi soir, vous aurez l'occasion de voir la place de la victoire en fête avec les soirées étudiantes. En effet, le jeudi soir, c'est le rendez-vous des étudiants au bar ou sur les quais histoire de décompresser. Mais attention au mal de tête le vendredi matin. Au niveau des bars, il y a des thèmes pour tous les goûts. Jeux vidéo, danse, pub. Pour les moins fêtards, il y a toutes sortes de cafés pour étudier, lire, rencontrer ses amis ou même pour jouer à des jeux de société. Entre le comptoir des chats, l'anti-café ou le Starbucks qui vient des états unis le choix est vaste. Pour continuer notre visite, il y a la rue Sainte-Catherine, rue piétonne la plus longue d'Europe, qui s'étend sur 1,2 km. On s'y rend en général pour y faire du shopping, puisqu'on y trouve toutes sortes de magasins. On peut aussi tout simplement s'y promener, et profiter de l'animation des rues. Sur la place des Quinconces, on trouve le monument des Girondins, érigé en souvenir de la terreur qui suivit la Révolution française. Suivant les saisons, de nombreux événements y ont lieu, notamment la fête foraine ou le cirque. La place de la Bourse et son miroir d'eau se trouvent le long des quais, un endroit très agréable pour se promener ou passer du temps entre amis. L'accès à l'université bordeaux Montaigne se fait par le tram B à l'arrêt Montaigne-Montesquieu. Vous la découvrez ici, en période de Covid, où le campus est vide puisque les enseignements ont entièrement basculé à distance. La première université de Bordeaux fut créée dès le XVe siècle. 
L'université de bordeaux Montaigne doit son nom à Michel Ekem de Montaigne, philosophe humaniste et moraliste de la Renaissance. bordeaux Montaigne est la faculté des lettres, arts, langues et sciences humaines de Bordeaux. Notre université accueille environ 18 000 étudiants chaque année, dont 2 000 étudiants internationaux. Notre filière de langues étrangères appliquées représente, quant à elle, quelques 2 500 étudiants. Le corps enseignant et le personnel administratif comptent 1300 personnes. C'est une université publique, comme la quasi-totalité des universités en France, ce qui signifie que le coût de la scolarité des étudiants est très majoritairement financé par le budget de l'État. Seules quelques centaines d'euros sont à la charge des familles, bien que le coût réel s'élève à 12 000 euros par étudiant, la différence étant couverte par les impôts. L'Université bordeaux Montaigne est composée de trois unités de formation et de recherche, ou UFR. L'UFR Humanité, l'UFR Sciences des Territoires et de la Communication, et notre UFR, l'UFR Langues et Civilisations. La filière Langues étrangères appliquées comporte trois blocs disciplinaires d'égale importance. Le premier est un bloc de matière obligatoire pour tous et axé sur le monde de l'entreprise, économie, droit, géopolitique, mais également informatique et français. Le deuxième bloc disciplinaire commun à tous, à tous les étudiants, est l'anglais. Enfin, en plus du français et de l'anglais, les étudiants doivent choisir une troisième langue parmi les neuf proposées, qui sont l'allemand, l'arabe, l'espagnol, l'italien, le portugais, le coréen, le chinois, le japonais et le russe. Enfin, à la suite de la licence LEA, les étudiants peuvent choisir parmi deux masters, le master Commerce international et pays émergents et le master Langue, Affaires, Interculturalité. L'avantage de Bordeaux, c'est qu'en dehors des cours, il y a plein de choses à faire. Que ce soit avec les associations étudiantes de l'université comme Lead the Way pour les LEA, à la maison des étudiants où ont lieu par exemple des cafés japonais ou en ville, vous trouverez forcément votre bonheur. This project between Montclair University and the University of Bordeaux actually started thanks to Domenica Dominguez, who heard about the FACE Foundation grant for virtual exchanges. So she contacted on our side one of our colleagues, whose name is Véronique Béguin, who is the person in charge of the partnership between our two universities. Véronique thought about Sophie Rachmul and I as potential, you know, contacts for this program or for this project because she knew that Sophie Rashmul and I both work in a sort of collaborative translation group at the university with which we translate poetry, mostly Caribbean poetry, but also we translated in the past poetry from Los Angeles, all sorts of things. It was due to this, you know, belonging to this group of translation that she thought about us. As a result, Sophie and I started working with Dr. Loyson and we came up with loads of thrilling ideas and that's how we launched the project. We did have an existing basis of a partnership with Bordeaux. We had some contacts over there and we just set to writing the grant under Domenica's direction and it became what it is today, which is this wonderful collaboration with Bordeaux. We had 11 students from Montclair State and we had 12 students from the University of bordeaux Montaigne. So a total of, I guess, 23 students. At Montclair State University, it was the students who are enrolled in our degree program in French translation who were going to be taking the course in French translation that we were offering this semester anyway. We have a three course sequence, and this was the second course in the sequence, translation two. So they would have been taking this course anyway, whether we were involved in this project or not. So we just thought this was a way to enhance their classroom experience, give them some real hands-on material to work with instead of you know, just thinking about translation in a theoretical way or translating text that really didn't have any relevance to their lives. This was a way to show them how translation can work in the real world. 
on our side, we had 12 students participate from the second year of LEA, which is the Applied Language Program. And they were chosen. We sent a message to all second year students in LEA. So this means 15 groups. This means about 450 students. We told them about the project. And we asked them to volunteer and apply. Included in their application, since we knew there would be some videos to make, we asked them to send a video form of their application so that they would be ready to use their smartphones as the project required. So they were chosen on that basis. There were 15 applications and we chose 12. The primary goal was to fulfill the mission of the FACE grant, which was to provide a forum for virtual exchange during the age of COVID. That was the mission of the FACE grant, was finding ways for students to experience some sort of exchange program, even when travel was not possible. Our specific goal, as we were trying to meet what FACE was asking for, was this combination of translation with the critical examination of a social question. And we chose the issue of Black Lives Matter, since it's so pertinent. And this blossomed into many other questions around democracy, citizenship, you know, the foundations of the two democratic societies. But France and the United States are two of the oldest democracies in the world. And yet we're very different in the way we conceptualize some of the foundational concepts of democracy. So the students and we discovered a lot about that through the practice of translation. I would say that if there hadn't been the COVID-19 crisis, this project would not have been possible at all because simply in terms of technicality, I mean, our university would not have invested so much money in a Zoom account if there had not been the necessity to do so. And without the Zoom, there was no way we could have done what we did. I mean, the sessions together, inviting people that we interviewed, working in breakout rooms six hours apart from one another, it turned a difficult situation into an opportunity, that grant. Because without the FACE Foundation grant and without the access to Zoom, the two together made it possible to give this impetus to the project. We had different academic schedules here in the United States than they do in France. So we started the semester at different times. We had different holidays. We ended the semester at different times. And so trying to make sure that we had enough time together to actually work on the project in the number of weeks that overlapped over the course of the semester. I'd say that was a logistical challenge. In the United States, we had two class meetings per week. Tuesdays, we would meet in person in our translation lab here on the campus of Montclair State University. And every Friday, we would meet via Zoom with the entire cohort of students and faculty from Bordeaux. On the French side, we could not meet with the students physically in a classroom because almost the entire year, starting November to June, we were constrained to teach online at a distance. And because so many students come from all over the place, sometimes rather far, quite a few of them went back to their parents during the semester. We did not have the opportunity to meet them for real, and all the classes took place via Zoom. However, it was in fact quite good in terms of, you know, meeting with the American students. That was really thrilling to be exchanging live with native speakers and not to have any delay between question and answer. Some of the high points were when we had people invited over to talk to our students. Dr. Sabine Tinchamp Benrao, who is a social linguistic expert, had this wonderful workshop with them where she led them to think about how you designate people who are white, non-white, and also she led them to think about those words that we refuse to say or that we feel awkward saying and why and how this is also telling about our society. One of the biggest things that I think they learned in relation to the question of race in both countries, I think the American students were shocked to learn that no one is counted by race in France. This enumeration by race and ethnicity does not happen. And I think the French students were just as shocked to discover that 
everything is counted by race in the United States. And yet they all said that when they had to describe a person, to them it seemed to be quite irrelevant to mention the color of their skin. Most of the students in this group came from multicultural backgrounds, multicultural families. So most of them had traveled. Some of them were actually immigrants or children of immigrants. And that was true also on our side. So over the weeks of this course, the students were made to work on quite a few different projects, quite a few different documents and types of work. This was a translation class. So they worked on speeches. They worked on articles that they had to translate. And the way we proceeded was to pair them up, one American, one French student, and to make them work together in breakout rooms. They were right away confronted to the reaction of the other person. If they said something that was awkward or not clear, they had right away the reaction of the audience. So instead of translating as they usually do, just writing a translation on a paper and then handing it in to the the teacher and waiting for the feedback. Right away, they had a native speaker who told them, oh, no, that, that doesn't sound right. And they had to readjust to find the right connotation, the right tonality. This made translation much more lively, but also it gave sense. It gave meaning to translation because they realized that when they translated, it was to actually convey the right message, the right thought to an audience. And that audience became suddenly real. So it's really gave this real life dimension to translation that they very often lack in a classic translation classroom. It's something that we usually tell them. We tell them, never forget that you're going to translate for someone who does not have the same perspective. But telling them is one thing, having them experience that for themselves is a totally different thing. It did work its magic on them and they became much more aware of how careful they had to be in picking their words. I think working on the Macron speech was a really interesting exercise because it was just at the moment when Americans here were reacting to Macron saying, we don't want American university ideas about race and diversity invading France ruining the French national character. So really this idea of multiculturalism, that took us down the path of secularism, la laïcité, separation of church and state, even though both countries, France and the United States, are founded on the basis of separation of government and religion. The students discovered that this is formulated and enacted in very different ways in both countries. And the word la laïcité really sums up that difference. And so our students, our American students, really had to grapple with, well, how would I translate this word? I would say some general goals were to compare how issues of racism translated and were lived on both sides of the ocean in terms of the legacy of slavery, knowing that Bordeaux was the biggest slave port in France, which is not known, or it's not something that is easily told about in school, for example, or taught. And then we found out that in New Jersey, it's sort of the same thing, since students were unaware that there was slave history in New Jersey. It was not abolitionist. It wanted to keep on uh, slavery. So they were very surprised and shocked to find this. And this was a, quite an exchange between the students. One of the high points of our semester was getting to visit the New Jersey Historical Society in person, arranged by the director, Steve Tedamonti, and the director of the research library, James Amemisor, who gave us a wonderfully informative lecture about the history of slavery and enslaved people on the Eastern seaboard and specifically in New Jersey. And so New Jersey, as we know it today, as an English settlement, started in 1664, right? So we are talking about that. But before then, there were some Africans here, because the Dutch, we know, had introduced slavery, African slavery, to what became New Jersey. So when the English took over, there were some Africans here already, as enslaved people, and probably as free people as well, because we continue to see evidence of free black people in New Jersey. They would actually let us touch those really, really old documents and original documents, which was really like, I don't know how to explain that feeling. It was uh, just 
surprising and intense for me. Yeah, it really brought it alive, didn't it? I mean, seeing the, the, the old handwriting. Some negative ways that COVID affected the project was, for example, in France, they had much longer periods of lockdown than we did here in New Jersey. And so while they had planned to have a field trip to the Musée d'Aquitaine, it turned out in the end that they were never able to actually go visit the museum in person. Luckily, we were able to interview Lucy Edwards, who was the translator of the book, documenting the exhibit at the museum on the history of slavery in France and Bordeaux's involvement with it. It's important not to rewrite history. I think it's important that we look at what happened in the cold light of day. The linguistic reality, which was to designate human people people as if they were not human. Their objects, their possessions. There's a list of the slaves on the sugar plantation in Saint-Domingue, and it says there's the hommes, les femmes, les nègres, les négresses, les négriants, les négrettes, et les animaux. Ils sont listés avec les animaux, avec les chèvres. That fact speaks to itself, you know. Uh, speaks to itself. And that's why it's important to keep language as it was, to show okay. the horror of the reality that was in fact encapsulated in the language used at the time. I think another aspect that the students learned quite a bit about from Lucy Edwards was the profession of translation. Also how stressful it is. That's what yes. <laughs> they didn't realize how stressful it was. <laughs> yes. And one of them said, oh, that's for me now. <laughs> Because <laughs> I like things to be stressful. Another one said, okay, I don't want this because it's stressful for the same reason. Another great highlight was the culminating project for the students in their pairs was to choose an article related to Black Lives Matter in either France or the United States and research that article and present it to the rest of the class. So the students could see that the fight for racial justice isn't something that rose out of a vacuum. They could see this history going going back centuries. In terms of areas of commonality among the students, I think they all discovered just how difficult it sometimes is to talk about questions related to race. There definitely was some discomfort that the students had to overcome to be able to talk about these issues in an academic sense and talk about it freely. In terms of meeting our goals, I think we certainly met our goal of fostering intercultural communication. All the students were able to just get on Snapchat or Facebook Messenger and just form these instant friendships with one another. I also believe that we met our goal of shedding light on the dual history, the history of racism and slavery in both countries and the connections to the present time. I think that when you study languages, that's the whole point. The ultimate goal is to interact with people of the country. That was the real life experience of the year, especially at that time of the pandemic. One student said that it was the highlight of her two years at university. It was the best thing she had done. My name is Kathleen Loison. I am Associate Professor of French in the Department of World Languages and Cultures at Montclair State University in New Jersey. As part of my duties here, I am the coordinator of our undergraduate French translation program. I did my undergraduate work at Boston College and earned my PhD at New York University. And I have a dual specialization in early modern French literature and in translation studies. Hello, I'm Laurine Francois. I'm an associate professor at the University of Bordeaux Montaigne in France. I teach American literature as I wrote a dissertation about Elizabeth Bishop's prose and poetry. But I also teach uh, undergrad translation classes in the Applied Modern Languages Department, um, as well as Business English, Negotiation, and Intercultural Mediation uh, at the graduate level. So my name is Sophie Rashmuel, and um, I am an associate professor of American studies at uh, Bordeaux Montaigne University, and uh, where I've been teaching since 2001. I've been teaching American studies and uh, English, uh, the English language, and I've also been chair of the Applied Modern Languages Department since 2012, which is about almost 10 years.
Bien, bonjour. D'abord, permettez-moi de me présenter. Je m'appelle Castor Adlin Castor. Je suis originaire d'Haïti, vivant aux États-Unis, spécialement à New Jersey, il y a environ 21 ans. Euh, je suis étudiant à l'Université de Montclair. Comme vous le savez, autrement, je ne serai pas là. Euh, en fait, ma petite étudie français. Hello, I'm Leo Dupéron. I'm in my second year of Applied Languages, studying both English and Japanese. I'm passionate about Japanese state of mind and music, and I come from Bergerac, a city located in Dordogne at 1 hour drive from Bordeaux. I'm sure it's a really nice place to visit, so let me know if you want to know more about it. C'était très intéressant de travailler avec quelqu'un de plus expérimenté aussi bien dans la vie que dans les langues. Et grâce à Adeline, j'ai vraiment pris confiance en mon anglais et je le remercie pour ça. Oh, je suis flatté de ta part, Léo. En fait, ce semestre a été pour nous un succès, non seulement pour la traduction, mais aussi pour notre communication en partenaire. Et d'ores et déjà, je vous souhaite un bon avenir. My name is Iskani Sanfour. I'm from Haiti. Actually, I'm a sophomore. I'm majoring both in linguistics, also in French. Um, actually, je parle quatre langues. Je parle français. I speak English. Je parle espagnol aussi. Et moi, je parle créole haïtien. Euh, du coup, moi, je suis euh, Lucie. Euh, J'ai 19 ans. Et du coup, j'en suis à ma deuxième année de fac. Et, euh, et puis à côté, je fais de la danse de salon, on fait de la salsa et de la bachata et de la kizomba. Et voilà. We could accomplish good work because we got along very well. Le fait de pouvoir travailler en équipe, on était toujours disponible pour les projets. La façon qu'on a discuté à fond les sujets, ça m'a aidé d'avoir une autre perspective sur la façon que vous, les Français, vous aviez sur les faits. Donc, c'était vraiment une expérience extraordinaire. Hi, my name is Janice Maxim. This is my senior year, currently in the Language, Business, Culture program at Montclair State University. My parents are from Haiti, but I was born here in the United States, Old Bridge, New Jersey. Um, I currently speak Creole and English, and I'm trying to study is French. Bonjour, je m'appelle Eloïse Chopé-Renaud, je suis étudiante en deuxième année de licence à bord de Montaigne. J'apprends le chinois, mais je parle aussi anglais et espagnol. During this project, we both learned that we have to be careful when translating. Literal translation isn't always the best choice, and translating word for word might give the wrong feeling to the reader. We encountered this problem when using the word influence due to how it doesn't have the same trans uh, meaning in French and can't be used the same way. Hi, my name is Daniel. I am a junior at Montclair. I study English and French, and I'm also pursuing a master's in English. I am from Fairlawn, New Jersey. I'm Italian, and I have a lot of family also in France, and I speak English and French. Hi, everyone. My name is Raphael. I'm 20. I used to live in Paris, but now I'm living in Mignac, which is a city nearby Bordeaux with my two siblings and my mom. Uh, when I got some free time, I like to hang out with my friends and practice judo. Um, I'm also studying Japanese and English at University of Monday. The most useful thing in translating with a native French student is when to use specific words and phrases that an American translator is not particularly aware of. Then I'd like to add that it helped me a lot with the using of sentence structure. And finally, it was really fun and enriching as we learned about New Jersey and Baldo slavery involvement. Hello, my name is Gervin Germalus. I'm currently studying French translation with a minor in computer science at Montclair State University. I was born and raised in Haiti. Both of my parents were born and raised in Haiti. I speak French, I speak English, and I speak Haitian Creole. Bonjour tout le monde, je suis Candice et j'ai 19 ans. Et je suis en deuxième année de ma licence, ma deuxième langue est le chinois. Depuis que j'étais petite, j'ai toujours aimé voyager et 
j'ai de la chance parce que ma mère est originaire du Portugal. Je vis dans les hautes pyrénées dans une petite ville qui s'appelle Bagnères de Bigorre. Donc j'adore le sport et vivre dans les montagnes, ça permet de me découler. Comment on dirait en Occident Merces plat. The words can be so many things. There's a country difference, like a republic and republican. Du coup, c'était intéressant parce qu'on a beaucoup appris sur la culture des uns et des autres et des choses que on pouvait penser que c'était pareil pour tout le monde et qui en fait sont différentes. Bonjour, my name is Taib Ostron. I'm a sophomore at Montclair State University. My major is a business, culture, and language with a specification in the French language and culture. I am American, French, and Turkish. I speak uh, all three languages and have all three nationalities. Tadia Rao, je m'appelle Odile Cazeneuve, j'ai 21 ans et je suis en lettres étrangères appliquées à l'Université de bordeaux Montaigne où j'étudie l'anglais et le chinois. Je suis bordelaise, mais j'ai la nationalité française et anglaise. Ma famille française est originaire de la région de Bordeaux et du bassin d'Arcachon, et ma famille anglaise est originaire des États-Unis et d'Angleterre. Saïdienne What surprised me the most was how easily we understood each other and how well we worked. It felt as working with a student from my own class and not so much an international exchange. Euh, moi, ce que j'ai trouvé le plus euh, intéressant, c'est euh, d'en apprendre plus sur la traduction. Et j'ai trouvé que le travail en binôme m'a permis de vraiment se rendre compte que la culture a une influence sur la compréhension. Hello, my name is Amelia. I speak English, Spanish, and French. I'm a political science major. I'm a sophomore. I previously lived in Quebec, Canada, which is why I speak French. My parents are Dominican and Spanish, and I live in Lodi, New Jersey. Bonjour, je m'appelle Kenza, j'ai 21 ans et je vis à Londres, qui est charmante petite ville du sud-ouest de la France à 20 minutes de Bordeaux. J'aime aussi beaucoup l'art, il parle aussi espagnol, euh, Canada, la Via, et je parle aussi speak anglais et un peu italien. J'aime beaucoup le sport, j'ai pratiqué du tennis pendant plus de 10 ans. De plus, je travaille dans un hypermarché de Claire où je passe la plupart de mon temps en dehors de mes cours. Traduire avec Amélia a été vraiment bénéfique. J'ai appris beaucoup de choses grâce à elle. Nos cultures sont différentes et c'est ce qui est intéressant. Euh, J'ai adoré partager mes idées et entendre des points de vue différents. Working with Kenza was very fun. Every time we met on Zoom, there was a bond. We developed a friendship I'm very proud of. As she said, our cultures are very different because we live in two different countries and have very different governments. Bonjour à tous. Uh, je m'appelle Ming. J'ai 28 ans et mon spécialisé est français, traduction et éducation. J'ai 28 ans et j'ai deux fils. Je suis, j'habite à West New York, New Jersey. Bonjour, je m'appelle Alexandra et j'ai 23 ans. Je viens de Lorraine où vit toute ma famille et j'habite maintenant dans les Landes avec ma mère. J'ai donc des bases d'allemand et d'espagnol. Je suis en deuxième année de licence et j'apprends le japonais, l'anglais et en cours du soir j'apprends le coréen. C'était une très bonne expérience de pouvoir traduire avec l'aide de mine car j'ai appris que certains mots ont des différentes connotations et que nos visions du racisme présents dans nos pays diffèrent. I love that we can work together to translate the whole article from French to English. Bonjour, my name is Steven Ochoa and I'm a 21 year old student that goes to Montclair State University and I'm currently studying jurisprudence in French and I'm also of Colombian, Guatemalan and North American descent. Salut, je m'appelle Julie. J'habite dans le Médoc situé au nord de Bordeaux et dans la région Nouvelle-Aquitaine mais je suis originaire du Nord Pas-de-Calais et de la Lorraine dans le nord et l'est de la France. Je suis actuellement en deuxième année de langue étrangère appliquée où j'apprends l'anglais et l'espagnol plus la langue des signes. Cette expérience a été une belle opportunité pour améliorer mon français. J'ai trouvé cela vraiment amusant de voir comment vivait le français de l'autre côté du monde. I liked working as partners. Fortunately, we complement each other very well, and because of this, we were able to help each other understand what we were transcribing.
Hello, I'm Stephanie, or Steph for short. I am a junior slash rising senior. I am a French major with a education in translation and a minor in Spanish and international business. I am from Puerto Rico and I currently speak Spanish, English, and French. Salut, moi c'est Annelle, j'ai 19 ans, je suis en LEA anglais espagnol, et entonces hablo un poco espagnol. Je vis dans une petite ville entre Arcachon, là où il y a la plage, et Bordeaux, le centre-ville. And here are some things that inspire me. When it comes to translating, we have to keep in mind really unique context in this case. We wouldn't use the same words if we're addressing the book to a French person or to an English person because both countries have different histories and different pasts. Hi, my name is Iram. I'm 22 years old and I'm a senior at Montclair State University. I'm majoring in marketing and I'm minoring in French. I've been studying French for seven years now and my parents are from Turkey so I can speak Turkish as well. I'm Victoria and I'm in my second year of university. J'étudie principalement l'anglais et l'italien, mais aussi le droit et l'économie, ainsi que la géopolitique. Io habito in un piccolo villaggio che si chiama Saint-Capré de l'Herme, nel Lot et Garonne. Salut, moi c'est Marie-Camille, j'ai 19 ans, je suis en deuxième année de LEA anglais et russe. Je viens d'Espelette, un petit village dans le sud-ouest de la France, au Pays Basque, à près de Bayonne ou de Biarritz. C'est à 2 heures de Bordeaux. C'est une région très touristique l'été, notamment grâce à ses plages et à ses montagnes. Okay. I thought it was a really great experience working with you guys because it's not every day when you actually get to speak to somebody from another country and really understand how they would translate things. I think it was very interesting that when we were translating, uh, we had different point of view on words and sentences. I think the pandemic really helped us because I don't know how we would have worked together. Okay, we hope that is going to continue. Now we're thinking of doing this in third year here and continuing with Dr. Loison's class. To make it work, since our students will be more numerous, we are thinking of setting up triads instead of dyads because we had one triad in our group. The triad said that they had actually enjoyed being a triad because it was much more dynamic. And I think the video was uh, greatly enjoyable and it helped us and them think back and have specific examples to think upon what they had enjoyed and discovered and they analyze this from an interesting angle throughout when we continue this project i hope to be able to uh, include this in our curriculum because i am responsible for the creation of the program and so i hope that they will become official as a virtual exchange translation class or class in common